Hi and welcome to the MacBook Tips and Tricks video. This video is ideal if you've just got a new MacBook or if you've had one for a while and you're looking for some new tips and tricks. Either way, I'm sure you'll find something of use here, so without further ado, let's get into it. The toolbar on a Finder window has some mysterious buttons. We go to File, New Finder Window, and you can see them here. To make them make sense, best thing to do is right click on them and select Icon and Text. That way you can see exactly what they do. In addition to that, you can also go to Customize Toolbar. And here we have some more options which you can add to your toolbar. In this example, I'll take Get Info. All I do is click it and drag it into a place on the toolbar. Click Done and it stays there. When working with your files and folders, a scroll bar is useful because it lets you know how many files and folders are in that section. By default, it only appears when you scroll. If you'd like it there permanently, head over to the Apple logo, come down to System Preferences, then General, and we have a section for Show Scroll Bars. Select Always. Close that window, and you can see the scroll bar remains. If you want to change the font size on your display, it's quick and easy. All you need to do is go up to the Apple logo, come down to System Preferences and Display. You'll see a resolution section. Just click this button next to Scaled. Here you can choose larger text and just click OK here. And as you can see, the font size is magnified. If you want it smaller, just go to the other end where it says more space and you can see it's a lot smaller. And just to compare that, here's the default once again. If you find that your display dims after a short period of time, you can adjust this to a longer period just by heading up to the Apple logo, back to system preferences and this time we're going to battery. Within battery, we select battery again on the left hand side and you'll see this slider here and you can turn display off after just slide it up to 15 minutes, one hour, three hours, never or anywhere in between. By default, the MacBook requires you to press on the touchpad for a click to be recognized. Every time you press the touchpad clicks, there is an alternative way to do this and it's a lot quieter too. It's just to tap. To enable this, go to the Apple logo, onto System Preferences. Then we want to go to Trackpad. And we have an option here, which is Tap to Click. Tick that. Now, rather than clicking, you just need to tap. Much quieter and much easier. Sometimes it's useful to have two apps open side by side and this is when Split View comes into play. All you need to do is start with your applications open. I'm starting with the Firefox browser and I have Pages just here. What you do is hover over the green button here. You get a drop down and you can select Enter Full Screen, Tile Window to the left or Tile Window to the right. I'll select Left and any other app you have open will take up this space here. To take up the full space, click on the app, and as you can see, you can now bounce between the two apps, which are taking 50% of the screen. If you'd like to make one slightly bigger, you can do so like that. And also on the other side, you can pull the bar across. And when you're finished, you can head up to the top and you can press the red X to close the app, or the green to reduce the app down. If you want to see a file's full name, including its extension, as in this example here, I have a JPEG file. What we need to do is go this time to Finder, Preferences, Advanced, and just make sure we have a tick next to Show All File Name Extensions. The Control Center icon is found on your menu bar in the upper right of the computer, and it gives you access to the most frequently used options. You can select Wi-Fi, for example, and it will show you your personal hotspot as well as Wi-Fi information. If you click on Network Preferences, it takes you to the System Preferences area, Network in this example, and gives you the full breakdown. 
If we do the same thing with Bluetooth by selecting it, we can see our devices and again, Bluetooth preferences takes us to the main Bluetooth area in system preferences. If we select, for example, Wi-Fi and we want to go back, we just tap Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, same thing, tap it to go back. We can turn on Do Not Disturb. We can adjust the keyboard brightness and for this, we can use the keyboard or I can use the touchpad and slide up and down. Tap keyboard brightness to return. We have screen mirroring if I wish to use that. And again, I can slide the display brightness up and same with the sound, turbos up and down as well. In addition to that, I can drag any one of these options onto the menu bar so they stand alone. Let's take Wi-Fi. So I'll press and drag that across. I have Wi-Fi there, press, drag across, and I have Bluetooth. Now I can access these individually. And if I want to remove one, all I need to do is hold down the Command key, press and drag away, and you see the X there, release, release, and the good thing is it makes no change to the original control center. If you'd like to see how much battery life you have left and have it displayed right here on your menu bar, here's what we do. We take a gander across to the Apple logo and yes, you've guessed it, system preferences. This time though, we are going to dock and menu bar. Scroll down the left hand side and go to battery. And right here we have some options for battery. We'll select show in menu bar and we'll go to show percentage. And you can see I have 14%. Hopefully that will be enough for this video. We'll see. If you want to change your desktop background, just get your mouse in a clear space on your desktop, right click using your two fingers and go to change desktop background. On the left hand side, we have some sections. We have the desktop pictures, which are displayed here. We have dynamic desktop. You can go from dark to light. Similarly, you can do the same with these images here. You can go light, you can go dark. And we have some desktop pictures just below, which display different pictures. You can also go to colors if you just want a plain, simple block color, you can do that also. You can go into your photo section and choose a photo if you want to do that. And just at the bottom, we have pictures and downloads. Perhaps you've downloaded a picture from the internet, could be in the downloads folder. Just at the bottom here, we have change picture and you can have the MacBook change the picture every 30 minutes. And if you really want to change it frequently, you can change it every five seconds. Now, if you want to do that, let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear what that experience is like. I haven't tried it. And you can also select random order. So there you have it, changing your desktop background. Using emojis in your text is fun and they really help express what you mean. To use them on your Mac, just make sure you're in a text area. Then press the function key just in the bottom left and you'll see the emojis. If you want to expand this window and see even more, just press this little button next to the search bar. Now you'll see a plethora of options. And just for fun, why don't you just leave the most random emoji that you can find in the comments and I'll do the same. I'll reply with the most random one I can find as well. That'll be fun. If you want to reduce this window, just press the same little button here beside search. And when you're done, just press the X. Happy emojis. By default, when you open a new finder window, it places you in the recent section. Now, if you want to change that and perhaps open on your desktop or documents, etc., just go up to finder on the menu, go to preferences, and just towards the bottom, it says new finder window show, and I've selected desktop. It was originally on recents, I've selected desktop, and you can choose other locations here or click other and navigate to exactly where you want. What we'll do now is add the status bar and path bar to the bottom of our finder window and both give us handy bits of information. To do this, just make sure you've selected your finder window, go up to view, come down the list and go to show path bar. 
here you can see exactly where this folder is. We go back to view, we come back down and we go to show status bar. And now we can see that we have one item here and we can also see how much space we have left on the hard drive. To access widgets on your Mac, head to the top right corner and click on the date or time. They come flying out from the right hand side and if you want to reposition one, just press and hold it, drag it up or drag it down. The widgets will just shuffle around it and make room for you. If you click on one of these widgets, it will open up the corresponding settings window or if it's an app, it will open up the app itself. If you'd like to change which widgets are displayed, what you can do is scroll down to the bottom, go to edit widgets and let's say for example we want to remove, just click remove and we have options here, you can scroll down this list and choose a new widget or as many as you like in natural fact to add. So we have small size, medium size, large size. Let's say we want to go for this one, just tap it and it will add it to the bottom. And again, you can just reposition if you wish. Same again, we have BBC here. Let's just make that large, click add, and it's added. If we change our mind again, just press this button here and remove. Once you're happy, click done, and your widgets are stacked on the right hand side. Okay guys, this is the end of the video. I've had a lot of fun making it. I hope you found something useful in it as well. If you have, let me know in the comments, give the video a thumbs up and I do have some more videos in a MacBook playlist which you can check out if you want some more tips and tricks. Once again, thank you very much. I wish you a great day ahead and hey, in the words of Bugs Bunny, that's all folks.